Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Jesus Christ, our Lord, make us worthy to celebrate the solemnity of your ascension. We raise our pure hands to you in prayer, our chaste souls to you filled with grace, and our sincere hearts to you with charity. We yearn for that place to which you have ascended, so that with the host of the angels we may glorify and thank you, your Father and your Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the one who came into the world from the Father. He was hanged upon the cross, buried in the tomb, and raised from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives and forever. Christ, by your ascension, you ended your stay upon the earth. You completed your plan of salvation and returned to the Father to prepare a place for us so that we might be where you are. You taught us the way to the place where you were going and you told us to follow you. When Thomas asked you, we do not know where you are going, how is it that we can know the way? You answered, I am the way and the life, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, O Christ, our Savior, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense to walk with us on the way that leads to the Father. Turn our eyes toward him, strengthen our desire to be with him, and guide our steps so that we may reach the Father through you and with you. We praise you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Was we so that Christ ascended? 
Christ our Lord, accept the fragrance of this incense that we have offered to you on this feast of your ascension into heaven. Grant that we may prepare ourselves to receive the Holy Spirit, whom you promised to send to us. May we take the places that you have prepared for us in the presence of the Father and meet you in the heavenly kingdom. We praise you, your Father, and your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Saint Paul to the Ephesians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. And therefore, I also, hearing of your faith in the Lord Jesus and of your charity for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, so that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation 
resulting in the knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened so that you may call, know what is the hope that belongs to his calling and what are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the saints and what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe. In accord with the exercise of his great might, through which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the world to come. For he has placed all things under his feet, and he has given him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, in the fullness of the one who fills all things in all. Praise be to God always. Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John, who proclaimed life unto the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself, and he will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only for a little while longer. You will look for me, but as I have told the Jews, where I go, you cannot come. And so, now I say this to you. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. So you also should love one another. And this is how all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. This is the truth, peace be with you.
May the eyes of your heart be enlightened so that you may know what is the hope of his calling. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So we ask the question, what is hope? What does it mean to live by hope? We have this word around. And in common English, it usually means like consolation or some kind of optimism. But what is hope actually? So St. Paul in this letter to the Ephesians, coupled together with the letter to the Colossians, these two letters are among the most sublime. This is, they're written probably in the late 50s. And so it's after about 20 years, two decades that that St. Paul has contemplated the gospel message. And what he does in the Colossians and the Ephesians is he speaks about the revelation of the mystery of God, the plan of God that has been hidden in the Father from before the creation of the world. And how this transformation that takes place now in Christ So on the Ascension, we considered this transformation from the Messiah to church. And this transformation is reflected in the rum show of the Ascension by speaking about the unbreakable bonds between this world and the next. And so we reflected upon that on the Feast of the Ascension itself. Here, St. Paul is giving a vision of how the Christ is transfigured, not only at the right hand of the Father, personally for himself, but that how this overflows into the world into what he calls the inheritance. And so I recommend to you to read at least these first two chapters of the letter to the Ephesians. They are profound. And you just have to go line by line in them because he says this is the purpose why I'm an apostle. The purpose of being an apostle is to reveal this mystery of God's election and of God's salvation. That's its purpose. And then from the overflow that takes place of this fullness of God in all, that from there flows forth that charity to others. So yesterday in the gospel we considered, or yesterday in the epistle to the Philippians, we considered how the church turns, how the grace, receiving the grace of redemption, it turns us towards back to humanity. It turns us back to one another. It turns us back away from the radical selfishness that's our wound of original sin. Me, mine, I. That aspect of turning one is what we call the body of Christ. And so in the unbreakable bonds that we considered on the ascension, the unbreakable bonds being our Lord in his transformation takes place as head of the church, and we are the members of that body. So we become the overflow. The church on earth is the overflow and the fulfillment of what God's plan is in order to gather in all the nations. And so you have this in the prayers that we have today, that he has placed shepherds, over the body, over the flock, in order to bring all the nations in. And so St. Paul talks about this aspect of this glorification of our Lord. Clearly our Lord is glorified in in the resurrection. The ascension is the fulfillment of that resurrection. And in order to understand that, it's why when we have the ascension, when it takes place, and the apostles are just as confused as they have been throughout the 40 days, that what he winds up doing and taking place in this is that he's lifted up and as the apostles watch, he's covered by a cloud. The ascension to his father's right hand is not something that is needed to him. I mean, after all, for 40 days they've watched. He's in Galilee, he's in Emmaus, he's in Jerusalem, he's here all on the same day, he moves. The ascension is a teaching and an understanding for us It's not because he has to get somewhere that he ascends to the right hand of the Father. The ascending to the right hand of the Father is to prepare a place for us. For him, it's a return to the glory that he's possessed from all eternity. It's the glory that he has had with the Father from before the foundation of the world. This is why the Gospel from St. John is selected to go with this. That he has glorified him, and if he glorifies him, he will glorify him in himself. And this will be done immediately. Our Lord is speaking at the Last Supper. So that when our Lord goes to the right hand of the Hidden Father in this plan of election and salvation, it's to prepare also a dwelling for us. 
remembering always that when we speak about heaven, the common world in our generation and the paganism talks about it as if it's a place with green fields and nice places and seeing grandma and all of that. And it's fine, but it's, in fact, it's all wrong. Heaven is not just to go to some place to be with the ancestors. It is a transformation of our existence that begins here below in this mystery of salvation. And all that our Lord is doing when he says that there are many dwellings in my Father's house, in my Father's dwelling, in my Father's existence, there are many levels, many places of existence. And I go to prepare your place. And so I go now to prepare. You do not know the way now, but you will know the way. So that later on in the same supper, here today it's quoted by our Lord saying, you do not know the way, and like I've told the Jews, you cannot come with me. But we are told that in the same supper, the Last Supper, when Thomas asked the question saying, we don't know the way, how can we follow you? Our Lord says, I am the way. You will, through me, you will find the salvation. So the ascension is actually a teaching for the apostles that your minds are meant to be lifted up to that place where the Son now is in his glory. So we ask the question again, what does it mean to be hope, to live in hope? When you enter into the Byzantine-style churches architecturally, they encompass this aspect of our Lord's exaltation. And he has two aspects, St. Paul says in this letter to the Ephesians that we read today. He is the sovereign of all creation. As man, as man of God, of course, he's already the creator. He is the origin of all things. But as man in his glorification, he becomes the sovereign, the governor of all of creation. The term in Greek is pantakrater, the one who governs panta, all things. And when you enter into the Byzantine tradition of the churches, the design, the very architectural design is done this way. So that at the lower level all around you, you have the icons of the martyrs and the saints around you. Because you are the body of Christ. You are merely placed among them at this level. But at another level, architecturally, you will have the apostles because they are the shepherds who bring to gather in all the nations into that reality, which is the body of Christ. But above them becomes the one by whom the hidden mystery enters the world, and you will have often the dome of the mother of God. And then in the very top of the building, you will have a dome, and in the dome will be Christ Pantocrator. So at the very height of all of creation, the one who governs all things, is the Christ in his glory. The ascension is a teaching to us of what has happened to human nature. First and foremost, personally within our Lord, within the Word incarnate, but also within us because we are engrafted into him by our baptism and by chrismation. And that is why even architecturally, Constantinople picked up this theme and designs their buildings to this day, always in this way. It's to remind us that when we are present, it is this body of Christ that is the overflow of God into the world. It's important to see that separation it winds up becoming, but it's not a separation. It is an elevation of humanity of the redemption. So in the exaltation, the second title that our Lord, that St. Paul speaks about is our Lord being placed as head over the redeemed humanity, as being <clears throat> placed over his body so that the body becomes the fullness of God on earth. Do we live that way? Do we live in our calling as Catholics, as Maronites, as Christians? Do we live understanding that we are the extension of the eternal plan of God from before the creation of the world in this generation as your vocation, your calling? So we go back to the question, what does it mean to live in hope? St. Paul winds up saying, if you read the first letter, you can, this chat, verse 15 to verse 23 is a very short section, but it's profoundly rich, where the first three verses, 15, 16, 17, 18, what I quoted to you was 18. 20, 21, 22, and 23 are all the vision of what is this fullness of God upon the earth. And so in the middle of it is this question about hope. 
So that what St. Paul is saying that I also, when I heard of your faith, you Ephesians, because remember these Ephesians who have been gathered into the body of Christ, they're living in one of the most degenerate pagan places in the empire. They worship Artemis, they worship Diana. They worship the great goddess who is in the temple that was considered one of the great classical wonders of the world by antiquity. And so he says, when I also heard about your faith, I was also very pleased. And every single day I pray for you in this parish in Ephesus to grow and to continue so that you might come to a knowledge of who the Father is in his fullness so that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. A very beautiful image. That the eye is so that you may see. Faith is a vision. Faith is not giving credence to something that someone else taught some time. Faith is vision to see in that belief, in that apostolic faith, to see all of creation. And again, in the Semitic understanding of the heart, that's just the, the very core, it's the person. So St. Paul is saying that I heard about your faith, may it go deeper. It has to go into this radiance of coming to a fullness that surpasses knowledge of the knowledge of the Hidden Father. And so I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you will see these things. And the first thing he says as an effect of that, so that you may come to understand what is the hope of his calling, his calling, the voice of God that has brought you to these, to this altar, to the divine sacrifice, that that calling out, and remember we've used these terms about the church. So in English we use the word church, but that is just through the Germanic languages and the other Germanic languages will use the equivalent. But it's coming from the Greek word kyriakon, Kiriakon, which means belonging, the thing which belongs to the Lord. But the other languages in Europe, the Romance languages, Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, French, they've taken another Greek word, which is ecclesia. Ek is from out of. Kleo is to call. Ekleo, ecclesia is the thing which comes about from ekleo being called out of the vocation. Vocation is just the Latin word for this ecclesia. Vocation is the act of calling out. Ecleo is to call out. And he says you have to be aware of what you've been called out by his vocation to understand what is the hope that comes from that. You've been not called to be Christian because it's a bunch of rules to follow. That's the way it's portrayed these days, is it not, by your colleagues? No, one need, no, no man's going to tell me what to do. I'm not going to confess my sins to any man as if a man was involved with this whole thing. This is God. This is God's transformation of the world. And it's that hope of the calling that he wants us to be established in. So that when he says that you may come to know what is the hope of his calling so that you will understand what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance among the saints. The saints does not mean moral rectitude in this sense. The saints are those who are consecrated through baptism and through faith. And so that transformation that takes place, then what is hope then? We can finish with that question. What does it mean to live by hope? First of all, you have to check off what hope is not. Hope is not mere optimism. It's not walking around saying, well, I'm a Christian, so I have to be perky. This is absurd. But we've seen that, you know that activity. You have to keep going through an emotional surgence because that's real faith. That's not faith. Faith is the conviction of that faith is vision. Faith is the ability to see. And hope is the same thing. Hope is not optimism. Hope is not trust that maybe I'm gonna get something if I'm a good boy. Hope is a transformation of understanding that there is a goal that is possible because we walk on a path that is grace. This is why you see in the Husoyo today, it says that you walk on this path with us and bring us, but what does it also ask for in the Husoyo is that you give us the vision of the Father. Allow us to see where we are going. We yearn for the place where you are. That is meant to be our place. 
The Holy Trinity, the Word of God, is transformed in his human nature. The human nature is with the right hand of the Father. God, his personality, who he is as divine Word, he's the never left God. This transformation at the right hand of the hidden Father is a transformation of human nature, of humanity. Hope is the understanding that that is open to me, that that possibility of transformation is given to me. This hope, this foundation is the result of the eyes of the heart being enlightened. And so as I say, go back and read these two chapters. They are profoundly beautiful and they are profoundly consoling. They are there that give us the strength of what it means to walk in this valley of tears. That it is the strength of understanding that there is a goal before us that is possible to us because of God, not because of us. And even when I am most miserable in my disappointments with life, and in the upsets that take place inevitably in my life, hope is meant to be the radiant light that allows me to continue through. Not because it makes me feel wonderful, but because I know that this disappointment is surmountable. To know that this misunderstanding or this disappointment is surmountable. That is hope. And so St. Paul says, your faith is good at Ephesus, but you need to go deeper. And you need to go deeper in that faith that is vision, and to find truly what is the consolation of hope in your vocation and the hope which brings you to that glory of the riches of God's inheritance himself. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was his kind of the Virgin Mary, and he came to me. For our sake he was crucified in the conscious fire. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven. And he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and his Son, who with the Father and his Son is the glory and glorified, who has so through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Almighty Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ, and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, our Holy Father, Saint Mary, and Saint Jude, and Saint Theodosia of Tyre. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. Continue with the anaphora of Saint Mark the Evangelist on page 835. 835. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord God, Almighty Father, you are true and holy love. May we be bound by your divine love and find joy in it all the days of our lives. Make us worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with a holy kiss through Jesus Christ our Lord. We may be your radiant and blameless flock. We glorify and honor you, your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor, the love and faith that are pleasing to God. that you grant us in your mercy the riches of your grace and kindness. May your compassion and assistance sustain us all the days of our lives 
through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people. We glorify and honor you, your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Father, you sent your only Son to save us, for we are weak and poor. When we had gone astray, he brought us back to your spiritual fold by his royal blood. Through the grace and the favor of your only Son, we implore you that you accept this bloodless sacrifice from our sinful hands, and through it to forgive our sins. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son, and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship Him with humility. Truly glory, thanks, praise, and honor are yours, O God, the Father, maker of all creation. With your only begotten Son and your living Holy Spirit, the angels, archangels, and all the heavenly hosts bless and praise you. They cry out and they proclaim. Jesus Christ, you 
remember your plan of salvation for us, your conception, birth, and baptism, your saving passion and life-giving death, your burial, your glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, your sitting at the right hand of God the Father, and your royal second coming when you will judge all people and reward them according to their deeds. Now we ask you, at that fearful hour, have compassion on us and have mercy on us in your kindness and forgive our sins in your mercy. For this your church implores you and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, before your awesome throne that we may raise glory to you to your only Son and to your Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. O Lord, exalt your Holy Church established throughout the world. Protect your shepherds of the true faith in peace and security all the days of their lives. Especially Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bishara Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, and all the bishops, pious priests, pure deacons, and all who serve your holy altar. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, all those who call upon your holy name. Bless those who are near and bring back those who are far. Visit the sick and strengthen the weak. Release captives and assist the oppressed. Bring back those who have strayed, that they may live in your fear and reward those who have brought offerings to your holy church. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, our civil leaders, and all the children of your holy church. Grant them security and peace, and keep domestic and foreign conflicts far from them, so that they may live in tranquility. Protect them by the sign of your living and victorious cross. Rescue the persecuted and the displaced of your flock, and be a refuge for strangers and a companion to travelers. Grant your eternal rewards to monks, to those who live solitary lives, and to hermits who live on mountaintops, in the caves of the earth. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Remember, O Lord, upon this altar and upon your heavenly altar, the holy and ever Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the prophets, apostles, martyrs, confessors, and evangelists, John the Baptist, the forerunner, Stephen the archdeacon and first martyr, St. Joseph, St. Jude, and St. Theodosia of Tyre, and all the saints. May we join their ranks and share in their joyful feast. 
we pray to who O Lord. Remember, O Lord, the faithful teachers who have gone to their rest in the true faith, especially Peter, Paul, Mark, Clement, Ignatius, Dionysius, Julius, and all those who endured suffering and persecution for the strengthening of your holy church. Remember also those who serve your holy altar and forgive their sins, that they may reach your joyful dwellings. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, all those who have left this world and have gone to you. Lead them to your joyful dwellings and blot out all their sins. Through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. And for us, O God, to the departed, and forgive the sins we have committed, with or without their Grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, as now it shall be forever. You have sanctified this divine service and have perfected it in your good pleasure by the grace of your only Son and by the descent of your Holy Spirit. Sanctify us now so that we may be renewed as your spiritual children so that with pure hearts and enlightened souls we may call upon you, O glorious Father and lover of all people, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power of the Lord of God. Deliver us, O Lord, from every temptation of soul and body <coughs> and crush our enemy, the evil one. Grant us your mercy through Christ Jesus, our Lord, for you are blessed and glorified with him and with your Holy Spirit now and forever. Shlomo el kolechulna. O Lord, look upon us, your inheritance, who bow before you, and guide our steps on your right path. Make us worthy to share in this sacrifice 
and may it sanctify the souls and bodies of those who receive it, through Christ Jesus our Lord. We glorify and honor you, your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Amen. Holy gifts for the holy with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory.
again and again we thank you, O Lord, and we raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. God the Father, how can we who are unworthy thank you for your grace? For you have given us this divine gift and have made us worthy to share in the body and blood of your only begotten Son who saved us. Through him, 
and with him, glory and honor are due to you and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Shlomo el Korechunna. Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, you are worshipped and you are holy. Bless and forgive the priests who are the stewards of your people and of your holy church. Forgive the servers of your divine mysteries and all the faithful who have shared in this sacrifice. Care for orphans, help widows, assist the poor and the distressed, satisfy the hungry, and protect all who call upon your holy name in every place. May your name be glorified with that of your Father and of your Holy Spirit, who is good, life-giving, and consubstantial with you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Leave you in peace of the Lord.